Hi guys. I had to go out today. I went out to the hospital. My aunt and my mom came and took me. I had to go get my CAT scan for my lungs done with the dye. Luckily they got the IV in the first try this time. That never happens. So I was very lucky there. It didn't take that long, but I started feeling really sick afterwards and I thought, well, maybe it's from that dye. Well, Cindy, or my aunt took um, us to Wendy's and I got a sandwich. I ate, and as soon as I ate, all the way home, I was having severe stomach cramps from my this stupid stomach disease. Severe cramps. I was praying on the way home for relief. It just would not go away. And, uh, it says updates ready for my computer. I was trying to read what that said down there. It's, shouldn't need updated already. I just got it. But, um, yeah, as soon as I got home, then I got in the house for about five minutes before I got sick and had to go to the bathroom. So, there went Wendy's. <laughs> So my stomach is, I took my stomach medicine of course, all of that stuff, and I took some Tylenol for my pain, hopefully it'll, I'm just freezing to death from going out, I'm not used to going out, I got goosebumps all over, froze, but I won't have to go back out again till, um, May 1st, because that's when I have to go back to the doctor. And then I gotta go back out on May 9th to go to my lung doctor to get the results from my CAT scan. So hopefully, after those appointments, I won't have any more for a while, I'm hoping. I'm sure my doctor will want to see me back in a week or two, she always does, but I usually cancel them as much as possible until she stops saying she's going to stop refilling my prescriptions unless I come see her. That's why I got to go this time. I don't feel like even going there this time, but I got to go just to get refills. So she'll probably want to do the blood work and all that update stuff while I'm there. So if she does, hopefully get it over with. So hopefully I don't have to go back for a while. This really wears me out when I go somewhere, you know. I mean, I know I'm in a wheelchair, but still, it's like I'm just drained. It drains me. Okay, guys. Um, anyway, I wanted to do the Bible reading for you guys. I just wanted to tell you guys what was going on with me today. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. I see it's nice and pretty out there again today. It's a little cool though, a little chilly. And of course I didn't wear my jacket. Should've. I didn't know it was that cold out there. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Could be just me. But today's today's um, Bible um, verse is going to be longer on Psalms because for some reason they got Psalm 90 and 91 together this time they never do that they always just have one Psalm but so it's going to be a little bit longer this video guys but we'll start with Luke 21 29 through 22 13 then he told them a parable look at the fig tree and all the trees as soon as they put out leaves you can see for yourselves and recognize that summer is already near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. I assure you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be on your guard so that your minds are not dulled from coercing drunkenness and worries of life 
or that day will come on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come on all who live on the face of the whole earth. But be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. During the day he was teaching in the temple complex, but in the evening he would go out and spend the night on what is called the Mount of Olives. Then all the people would come early in the morning to hear him in the temple complex. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was drawing near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put him to death because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. He went away and discussed with the chief priests and temple police how he could hand him over to them. They were glad and agreed to give him silver, so he accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him to them when the crowd was not present. Then the day of unleavened bread came when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us so we can eat it. Where do you want us to prepare it? they asked him. Listen, he said to them, When you've entered the city, a man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him into his house, he enters. Tell the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make the preparations there. So they went and found it, just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. That was Luke 21, 29 through 22, 13. The first psalm we're going to read is Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity you are God. You return mankind to dust, saying, Return, descendants of Adam. For in your sight a thousand years are like yesterday that passes by like in a few hours of the night. You end their lives, they sleep. They are like grass that grows in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and grows, by evening it withers and dries up. For we are consumed by your anger, we are terrified by your wrath. You have set our unjust ways before you our sacred sins in the light of your presence. For all our days ebb away under your wrath, we end our years like a sigh. Our lives last seventy years, or if we are strong, eighty years. Even the best of them are struggle and sorrow. Indeed, they pass quickly and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger? Your wrath matches the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days carefully, so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Lord, how long? Turn and have compassion on your servants. Sanctify us in the morning with your faithful love, so that we may shout with joy and be glad all our days. Make us rejoice for as many days as you have humbled us, for as many years as we have seen adversity. Let your work be seen by your servants and your splendor by their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish for us the work of your hands. Establish the work of our hands. That was Psalm 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. And the next psalm we're going to read today is Psalm 91, the protection of the Most High. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. He himself will deliver you from the hunter's net, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with feathers. 
you will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the plague that stalks in the darkness, or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, and ten thousand fall at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. You will only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place, no harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent, for he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Because he is lovingly devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor. I will satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. That was Psalm 91, the protection of the Most High. Last but not least for today is Proverbs 13, 24 and 25. The one who will not use the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him disciplines him diligently. A righteous man eats until he is satisfied, but the stomach of the wicked is empty. That was Proverbs 13, 24 through 25. So that was today's Bible reading, guys, and I've already got this up to over 12 minutes, probably for me rambling on at the beginning. Sorry about that. So I will get off here and get on your guys' stories for today. I love you guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and I'll have some stories up for you here in a little bit. Bye, guys.